good morning subject design of pre-stress concrete structures today's video topic is crack width contents introduction method of calculation limits of crack width introduction the crack width of a flexural member is calculated to satisfy a limit state of serviceability the calculation of crack width is relevant only for type 3 members the crack width is calculated for the cracks due to bending which occur at the bottom or top surfaces of a flexural member in psc members the cracking is under service loads only in the type 3 members so the figure shows the type 3 members wherein we can see three types of cracks are there flexural cracks flexure shear cracks web shear cracks so all the member is under having the cracks which are propagating towards the perpendicular axis of the member the flexural cracks starts from the tension phase and propagate perpendicular to the axis of the member if these cracks are wide it leads to corrosion of the reinforcing bars and pre-stressed tendons the cracks tends to widen under sustained load or cyclic load to limit the crack width type 3 members have regular reinforcing bars in the tension close to the surface in addition to the pre-stressed tendons the crack width of a flexural crack depends on the following quantities first one amount of pre-stress second tensile stress in the longitudinal bars thickness of the concrete cover diameter and spacing of longitudinal bars depth of member and location of neutral axis bond strength tensile strength of concrete now moving to method of calculation the design crack width wcr at a selected level on the surface of the section with maximum moment is given as follow wcr is equals to 3 acr epsilon m whole divided by 1 plus 2 in bracket acr minus c minimum bracket close divided by h minus x as equation 1 the notations for the equation 1 are as here ACR means shortest distance from the selected level on the surface of longitudinal bar so the shortest distance which we can select on the surface to the longitudinal bar in this figure we are able to see that we are able to see here the shortest distance as ACR1 this as ACR2 the shortest distance from this surface ACR3 this has the shorter distance from the this side of surface so this is the longitudinal bar of the member C minimum is minimum clear cover to the longitudinal bar minimum clear cover means surface of bar and external surface of the member is known as minimum clear cover the distance between both of them is known as the clear cover h total depth of the member x depth of the neutral axis epsilon m is average strain at the selected level the values of c minimum means minimum clear cover and h are obtained from the section of the member so total depth of the member and clear cover of the member is able to get from the member which is been casted the evaluation of the other variables is explained so other uh, variables such as x a acr and average strain which has to be considered we are going to find out so evaluation of acr the location of crack width calculation can be at the soffit or the sides of a beam the value of acr depends on the selected level so the shortest distance depends upon the selected level for that 
following sketches as follows. Values of ACR at the bottom corner A. So, at a bottom corner A. At a point in the soffit, in the soffit at a point if we select it as a point B and at a point at the side is the point C. So, here we can have three shortest distances least of this three we are going to consider it as the shortest distance as ACR. Usually the crack width is calculated at a point in the soffit which is equidistant from two longitudinal bars. This point is the location of maximum estimated crack width the following sketch shows the variables used in computing the shortest distance of crack. So, ACR. So, in this figure we can see this is the minimum cover, this is the ACR, this is the dia of the bar and this is the center to center spacing of the two longitudinal bars. Here we can see this as the effective depth or we say that it has the effective cover of the reinforcement. Using the geometry, the value of ACR is obtained from the following equation. So, the equation is ACR is equals to square root of S by 2. So, this S will be getting half. So, we are at this particular distance from here to here S by 2 square. So, we got the horizontal distance clear. Then this is root of square root of s by 2 square plus dc square dc is the height so it is similarly one vertical and from here to here as a horizontal now we got this as the hypotenuse so the hypotenuse is this minus we have to deduct this d by 2 d by 2 is what we are able to get the distance of dc d by 2 when we do we are exactly at the center of this and S is exactly center of that. From here exactly center of the reinforcement to the surface of the beam at the bottom level is the distance vertical. From here till the central span of the two longitudinal section is S by 2. When we do this with a Pythagoras theorem, we are able to calculate ACR that is the equation number 2. So, here you got db is diameter of the longitudinal bar, dc is the effective cover, this is c minimum plus db divided by 2, s is center to center span spacing of longitudinal bars, the values of db, dc and s are obtained from the section of the member itself only. Evaluation of x and epsilon m, so the strain in the average strain of the member and x. The values of x and m are calculated based on the sectional analysis under service loads. The sectional analysis, excuse, the sectional analysis should consider the tension carried by the uncracked concrete in between two cracks. The stiffness of a member due to the tension carried by the concrete is called the tension stiffening effect. The value of epsilon m is considered to be an average value of strain at the selected level over the span. The following sketch illustrates the cracking and uncracked concrete in flexural member. So, here we are able to see that there are some cracks in the flexural, flexural means tension is there and cracks are there and some part is uncracked concrete is there. So, this cracked and uncon uncracked concrete will be usually there for our analysis part or our determination of crack width part. The analysis of type 3 member should be based on strain compatibility of concrete and pre-stressing steel. Clear? So, strain compatibility of concrete means we are able to recognize that in IS 456-2000 recommends two procedures for the sectional analysis considering the tension stiffening effect where strain hardening will be there. 
rigorous procedure with explicit calculation of tension carried by the concrete we will not go with that we will go with the second method simplified procedure based on the conventional analysis of cracked sections we are finding only the cracked neglecting the tension carried by concrete first part neglecting the tension carried by concrete an approximate estimate of tension carried by the concrete is subsequently introduced for a rectangular zone under tension the simplified procedure gives the following expression of strain in the member so this epsilon m equals to epsilon 1 minus b in bracket h minus x a minus x divided by 3 es as d in bracket d minus x this is equation number 3 so this is only for the section of rectangular section without the uh, pre stressing with pre stressing it will change so in place of es as we are going to substitute that with for pre stressed member ep ap that is young's modulus of pre stress and area of pre stress plus Young's modulus of steel and area of steel. How much we are providing in this particular part is substituted in place of E S A S. The second term considers the tension carried by the concrete approximately by reducing the strain epsilon one obtained from the analysis of cracked section. So the expression which we saw. this expression a equal to distance from the compression face to the level at which crack width is calculated clear h width h when the crack width is calculated at the soffit b width of the rectangular zone how much is the width of the rectangular zone d effective depth of the longitudinal reinforcement as area of non pre stressing reinforcement that is area of steel ap area of pre stressing steel only for the pre stressing reinforcements es modulus of elasticity or young's modulus of non pre stressed steel ep modulus of elasticity of pre stressed steel epsilon 1 strain at the selected level based on a cracked sectional analysis is equals to Es a minus x divided by d minus x. Es is strain in the longitudinal reinforcement. Strain in the longitudinal reinforcement means the regular reinforcement. What is the strain in that? So here we can see some notations and some figures how the cross sectional of rectangular section and strain figures, the stress figures, and the forces which are acting. the depth of neutral axis x can be calculated by trial and error procedure till the equilibrium equations are satisfied the following sketch shows the beam cross section strain profile stress diagram and force couples under service loads the contribution of non pre stressed reinforcement is also included so let us see here b is the width of the beam d is the effective depth of the beam dp is the effective depth of the pre stressing here we can see as at the lower end and ap at the above the as ap is area of pre stressed steel as is area of non pre stressed steel regular steel so with this we are able to see here in the force this which are acting so here the compression of concrete is acting c and tension of pre stress tp is acting tension of normal steel tvs is acting so we know this couple formation of the steel and now x the neutral axis which we have to find this is the neutral axis where the stress strain changes from negative to positive strain changes from negative to positive so here we can see the upper part it is the strain in the concrete in the lower part we are able to see this as strain due to pre stressing and this is 
strain difference what is the strain difference means we are able to see that area of steel and area of precessing will be having difference between the strains that strain we are going to consider it as a strain in the steel the expressions of the forces are as follows c this force is equals to 0.5 times ec epsilon c x b equation number 4 tp area of precess ap ep epsilon p that is strain in precess ts as es epsilon s these equations are similar to the rectangular section which we have already studied in the rcc subject based on the principle of mechanics the following equations are derived first equations of equilibrium the first equation states that the resultant axial force is zero this means that the compression and the tension in the force couple balance each other summation f equal to zero vertically forces which are acting tp plus ts is equals to c means two forces are moving in the upward uh, rightward direction one force is moving in the backward direction so which will result as ap ep epsilon p plus as es epsilon s is equals to 0.5 ec epsilon c x into b equation number 7 the second equation relates the moment under service loads capital m with the internal couple in the force diagram m ap ts in bracket d minus dp plus c into in bracket dp minus 0.33x now we have what is ts we have what is c we will substitute that values in this equation that is as es epsilon s in bracket dp minus d minus dp plus 0.5 ec epsilon c x into b into bracket dp minus 0.33x this we will take it as the moment couple formation the second equation equation as per the video adds eighth equation the value of m should be equal to the moment due to service loads so whatever the moment we are able to find here this moment should be equal to the moment from the external loads as well as from the dead loads equations of compatibility the depth of a neutral axis is related to the depth of a cgs center of gravity of steel and the depth of a non precess reinforcement by the similarity of a triangles in the strain diagram so similarity of the strain diagram we can see x divided by dp is equals to epsilon c divided by epsilon c plus epsilon p minus epsilon difference so the change so that comes as x by d is equals to epsilon c and epsilon c plus epsilon s so this above is equation 9 this is equation 10 this is for the depth up to the precessing and this is up to the depth of normal effective depth constitutive relationship linear elastic constitutive relationships are used in the earlier expression of c ts and tp the known variables in the analysis are b d ap as epsilon dc abs ec ep es m the unknown quantities are x epsilon c epsilon p epsilon s the strain in concrete strain in precessing strain in normal steel so these are the known parts these are the consecutive relationships these are unknown quantities for the solving above equations given below we have to assume what is strain in concrete first part assume what is neutral axis depth approximately we have to assume then calculate the strain in the precess epsilon p and epsilon s from the equation number 9 and equation number 10 respectively second step fourth step calculate compression force in the concrete c calculate tension force in precess tp and calculate 
tension force in normal steel ts from the equation 4 5 6 respectively if equation 7 is not satisfied okay equation 7 is not satisfied change the value of neutral axis if tp plus ts is greater than c is sorry if tp plus ts is less than c decrease x decrease x if assume i have taken the depth of neutral axis as 350 mm and tp plus ts comes out to be 300 mm so 350 is greater than 300 mm i have to decrease c 350 i have to reduce it to nearly about 300 if tp plus ts is greater now this part is 450 c is 400 i have to increase this c from 400 to 450 this is a small example calculate m moment from equation number 8 if the values differ from the given value change strain in concrete and repeat from step number 2 so again we have to follow this method so this is the trial and error method which we have to find out till we get the perfect answers last part limits of crack width clause 19.3.2 of indian standard is 1343 1980 specifies limits of crack width such that the appearance and durability of the structural element are not affected the limits of crack width are as follows crack width less than or equal to 0.2 mm for a moderate and mild environment 0. Point less than 0 or equal to 0.1 mm for severe environment so these are the limits wherein we have to consider the type of environments are explained in table 9 appendix 2a is 1343-1980 so i will just show you what is the clause 19.3.2 and appendix a table 9 so here the 19.3 says limit state of serviceability cracking cracking of a concrete shall not affect the appearance or durability of the concrete the criteria of limit state of cracking for the three types of pre-stressed concrete members shall be as follows for type 1 no tensile stresses for type 2 tensile stresses are allowed but no visible cracking for type 3 now understood what is type 3 cracking is allowed but should not affect the appearance or durability of the structure the acceptable limits of cracking would vary with the type of structure and environment and will vary between wide limits and the prediction of absolute maximum width is not possible note for design of type 3 members as a guide the following may be regarded as reasonable limits the surface width of crack should not in general exceed 0.1 mm for members exposed to a particularly aggressive environment such as the severe category in appendix a and not exceeding 0.2 mm for all the other members so the table number 9 mentions what is the precious concrete member and how it is we consider so mild means for example completely protected against weather or aggressive conditions except for a brief period of exposure to the normal weather conditions during construction so this is the minimum cement content this is the maximum water cement ratio what we are considering for the exposure moderate exposure for example sheltered heavy and wind driven rain and against freezing vessel saturated with buried concrete in soil and concrete continuously under water severe for example exposed to sea water alternate wetting drying and to freezing vessel wet subject to heavy condensation or corrosive fumes Note. the minimum cement content is based on 20 mm nominal maximum size for 40 mm aggregate minimum cement content should be reduced by 10 percent under severe exposure condition 
only for 12.5 mm aggregate the minimum cement content should be increased by about 10% under moderate and severe exposure condition so here we have to understand that for mild it is 0.2 less than or equal to 0.2 and for moderate also less than or equal to 0.2 only for the severe condition it should be less than or equal to 0.1 thank you friends try to go in detail with the particular video